Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our second lesson on Statistics 1, whereby we are looking at how to draw a histogram and also a frequency polygon. So example 2 reads that the marks scored by a group of students in a test were recorded as shown. So of course, these are the marks which are representing our classes. Then of course, number of students in this case represents the uh, frequency. Then we are told on the grid, draw a histogram to represent the above information. Now there are two cases of drawing a histogram. So uh, the first case is uh, when we have a uh, uniform uh, class intervals or we to, what we are calling uh, the class width. So if the class intervals, if the class intervals, if the class intervals or the class width or the class uh, width is uniform if it is uniform then uh, we usually uh, plot uh, frequency we plot frequency against upper class limits against uh, upper class limits the upper uh, class limits then the other case is um, when uh, the class intervals when the class intervals uh, or what we are calling uh, the class width when the class width uh, is not uniform when it is not uniform then for such a case we usually uh, plot frequency density we plot frequency uh, density frequency density against upper class limits against upper class limits the upper uh, class uh, limits so that is uh those are the two cases so for example if we look at our case uh the class interval of course the upper class limit of this will be you add 0 0.5 so that is 34.5 the upper the lower class limit of this will be 30 minus 0 0.5 which gives you uh, 29.5 so if you take 34.5 minus 29.5 you are going to get uh, a class interval of uh, 5. Similarly, 35 to 39, so 39.5 minus 34.5, you'll still get 5. 40 to 44, the same class uh, width or the class interval will be a 5. Similarly, uh, 49.5 minus 44.5, you'll still get 5. So if you check all these classes, uh, the class interval is actually uniform. Therefore, for this case, our histogram we are going to plot frequency against the upper class limits but if one of the classes had a different uh, class interval for example if one of the classes had a class interval of uh, let's say 10 then for such a case we will plot uh, frequency that is frequency density against the upper class limit so the uniformity of the class width or the class interval is what determines whether you are going to plot a frequency against upper class limits or uh, the frequency density against upper class limits so for our case uh, the class width is actually uniform or the class interval therefore I'm going to plot a uh, frequency against upper class limits so I'll make uh, my two uh, axes so this is this will be my vertical axis axis then this will be uh, my horizontal axis so you have said that for this case the uh, classes are uniform therefore we are going to plot a frequency the frequency uh, of which for this case the frequency is represented by the number of students uh, number of students uh, the frequency is represented by the number of students for this particular case so we have a uh, number of students number of students then against the upper class limits so of course uh, the upper class limits the upper class limits class limits which are represented by uh, the class limits will actually be the uh, the max so which are simply the uh, max for this particular case then um, whenever you are plotting a frequency polygon on top of a histogram then you need to start with a, a class before a uh, the first class then of course another class after the uh, last class for example the last class in this case is the uh, 60 to 64 
therefore you are going to add one more class so the next class will be 65 uh, 65 uh, to 69 so we are adding one more class because remember for the frequency polygon we shall need the midpoint uh, of this uh, last class we'll also need the midpoint of the uh, class coming before so the class coming before 30 to 34 actually that class will be 25 it will be 25 to 29 25 to 29 Again, I'll need the midpoint of this particular class. That is why I'm including one class before that. Then after that, you simply uh, put the first value uh, along uh, this particular value here. So the upper class limit of this particular class will be 29.5. Then of course, the class that will come before 25 to 29, that class will actually be 20, uh, 20 to 20. Uh, 4 20 to 24 therefore its upper class limit will be 24.5 therefore the first value here will be 24.5 then i'm going to skip four boxes one two three four so here i'm going to have the next upper class limit will be 29.5 so this is 29.5 uh, then one two three four the next upper class limit will be uh, we have 34.5 so this is 34.5 uh, the next upper class limit is 1 2 3 4 uh, the next upper class limit will be uh, you add uh, 0 0.5 to 39 which will be 39.5 so this is 39.5 uh, then the next upper class limit 1 2 3 4 the next upper class limit uh, will actually be uh, 44.5 44.5 uh, uh, 44.5 then 1 2 3 4 the next upper class limit will be uh, 49.5 49.5 uh, then the next upper class limit will be 1 2 3 4 uh, so the next upper class limit will be a uh, 54.5 54.5 uh, then the next upper class limit will be uh, 59.5 so this is 59.5 then the next upper class limit uh, will be 1 2 3 4 so the next upper class limit will be 64.5 uh, 64.5 uh, then of course we are going to add one more class uh, uh, because we'll need the midpoint of the last class so one two three four so our last class in this case will be remember the next class after 60 to 64 will be 65 to 69 therefore its upper class limit will be 69.5 uh, so i'm adding one more class because uh, we shall need the midpoint of uh, the last class that is when we are drawing our frequency polygon then on the vertical scale, I'm going to skip two boxes. So I want to start with a 0, 0 at this point. After two boxes, I want to have a positive 1. After two boxes, positive 2. Uh, after two boxes, uh, positive 3. Remember for the frequencies, the larger one is 12. Uh, after two boxes, uh, positive uh, 4. After two boxes, positive 5. Uh, two boxes, positive 6. Two boxes positive seven uh, two boxes positive eight uh, two boxes are uh, positive nine after two boxes uh, we have ten after two boxes we have eleven after two boxes we have uh, twelve so the largest frequency uh, in this case is actually uh, twelve then I also make the axis uh, to be continuous then from there I'm going to plot the values so the first class I'm having 30 to 34 which is represented by 29.5 to 34.5 so 29.5 is here up to 34.5 uh, its frequency is actually uh, the frequency for this case is positive 3 therefore uh, 29.5 the frequency is positive 3 so this one will move up to positive 3 then of course it moves uh, 29.5 up to uh, the next upper class limit is 34.5 therefore 
uh, this particular bar is going to come at this point. The next class we have uh, 34.5 up to 39.5. The frequency is 6. So we are going to move uh, up to positive 6. So our 6 is here. So this one we should move, uh, should cover up to this particular point here. Then of course, I'm going to connect uh, these two. Then the next class is uh, 39.5 to 44.5, uh, having a frequency of 5. So the 5 is here. Uh, the frequency of 5 will be here. So this class uh, should uh, be represented by this particular uh, bar. Then we are going to move to the next class, which is uh, lower class limit is 44.5 up to the upper class limit, 49.5. The frequency is 12. So I need to uh, move up to 12 on the vertical scale. So this is where I'm having my positive 12. Then of course, uh, it has to connect up to 49.5, uh, up to 49.5. Uh, the frequency is positive 12. Then the next class is uh, 49.5 to 54.5. The frequency is positive 8. So our 8 is uh, here. So this one uh, should move uh, to this particular point here. So this is where our class will be. So we are going to have this up to this point. The next class is 54.5 uh, up to 59.5, which is having a frequency of 9. So our 9, our positive 9, is around this particular point. Therefore, I'm going to connect uh, these two uh, in this particular uh, manner. So it should come to this point. So I'm going to connect uh, these two uh, this way up to 59.5. Then our last class is uh, 59.5 up to 64.5. Uh, the frequency is 7. So positive 7 is here. So this is our positive 7. Therefore, I'm going to connect uh, this one up to uh, this point here so that uh, it runs from 59.5 up to 64.5. So this is what we are calling our histogram. So this is our histogram. Then part B of the question, we are told to draw a frequency polygon on the same grid. Remember, a frequency polygon, you simply join the midpoints uh, of the histogram. Therefore, uh, we need to uh, uh, identify those uh, midpoints. So the midpoint here of the first bar will be at this point. Then the midpoint of the second bar is at this point. Uh, the third one is at this point. The midpoint will be here. The midpoint uh, will be here. The midpoint will be here. The midpoint will be here. Then of course we cannot leave our frequency a polygon when it is hanging. Therefore you also connect it to the midpoint of the class that will come immediately before that. So the previous class will be 49, that is 24.5 up to 29.5. Its midpoint will be this point here. Then you can also, you cannot also leave this one hanging. So you connect it to the midpoint of the class that will come immediately after. Uh, that is uh, 60 to 64. So that class will be uh, 65 to 69, which is represented by upper class limits of 64.5 to 69.5. Therefore, uh, the midpoint of this particular class will be 1, 2, uh, 3, uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, its midpoint will be at this point. After that, you connect uh, those particular points, of course, uh, using a ruler. Remember, it's not a curve, so you connect using a ruler, uh, those midpoints. Then uh, this midpoint should be connected to uh, this one here. Then this midpoint should be uh, connected to this other midpoint here. Then this midpoint should be connected to that midpoint. Then this one uh, should be uh, connected to this other midpoint. Then this midpoint to be connected to this one here. Then we are going to connect these uh, to this point. Then of course this one to be connected to uh, the, the midpoint of the class that will come immediately after that. So uh, the line in red, that is what we are calling our frequency uh, polygon. So this is what we are calling our frequency uh, polygon, frequency uh, polygon. Then of course, the one represented by the bars, uh, this is what we are calling our uh, histogram. So this is our histogram. So a point to note, you always find a class before uh, the starting class so that your frequency polygon will not be hanging. You also establish one more class after uh, the last class, for example, we added from 60 to 64, 
we added an extra class of 65 to 69. Then from 13 to 34, we added a previous class, which was a 29 to, uh, that is 25 to 29, so that uh, the upper class limit of the previous class will be 24.5, so that you can see our histogram, that is the frequency polygon is uh, not hanging. So in our next example, we'll be looking at um, uh, uh, plotting a histogram when uh, the intervals or when the class intervals or the class width is not uh, uniform so that we see how we can uh, behave uh, for the case of when we need to use the frequency density uh, instead of the frequency. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.